Hey everyone, Golden Ninja 3000 here again. Today I'm taking a quick look at Lego Icons set number 10327. This is the Dune Atreides Royal Ornithopter. It has 1,369 pieces, eight fantastic minifigures, and retails for 165 US dollars. This released on February 1st. It is based on Dune Part 1, not Part 2, which just came out. And I wasn't planning on making a video on this set, but it's just so unique, the figures are so good, and I just saw Dune Part 2, it felt like the perfect thing to talk about this weekend. Before we get into it though, I do want to remind everyone that I am an employee of the LEGO Group, however, all opinions expressed in these videos are my own and do not necessarily reflect the views of the LEGO Group, and LEGO is a registered trademark of the LEGO Group of Companies, which does not sponsor, authorize, or endorse this site. Real quick, I do want to apologize for not making videos for like the last month and a half. Um, I had family visiting, I have been sick for a couple of weeks, so if I sound weird, it's because I'm still getting over that and I still have a bit of a cough. I want to start with looking at the minifigures. This is a quick review because I, I didn't want to do a whole review because this set has already been out for over a month. But these minifigures are just insane. Like I said, they are just so good. I honestly think that these are some of the best licensed minifigures we've ever seen. So on the left, we have Timothy Chalamet's Paul Atreides. This is the one minifigure I didn't like in photos because I thought that it didn't look like Timothy Chalamet at all. I just thought the face print was too generic. I'm happy to say I don't really feel that way in person. I think the face print is better than I was expecting. Um, but it's still my least favorite minifigure out of these eight. My favorite has to be his mother, Lady Jessica, because this outfit is just incredible to see, like, depicted in Lego form. I'm not going to take a look at, like, their back printing and alternate faces and everything, but she does come with a hairpiece, which I always love to see. I just kind of wish she came with a long cloth piece like the Baron does, because she did have, like, a huge train that was held by two servants, like, when they landed on Arrakis, and it would have been great to see, like, a long flowing cape for her. But that minifigure is just outstanding. It, it's really, really excellent. Then we have Paul's father, Leto, or is it Leto? I, I think it's a Leto Atreides. Um, but he just has a still suit on, so he doesn't have, like, any of his ceremonial garb on the way that Paul and Lady Jessica do. It would be great to get him matching in the ceremonial outfit, but we do have a lot of new prints there. And this is like an iconic look for him from the movie with him like being in the still suit and everything. So I can't really fault like the reuse of those prints. Next to him, we have Gurney Halleck, who's dressed in like the Atreides armor. So what I like about the minifigures is that you can kind of swap them out. Like you could put Paul's head onto Leto's body if you want him to be in his still suit. You could put Leto onto like Gurney Halleck's body if you want him to be in like the Atreides armor rather than the Fremen armor. So I like that you can kind of mix and match what you want. Then to the right, we have Duncan Idaho. That hairpiece is Tiana's from Disney, but recolored into dark brown, which I think is an excellent parts usage. He is like the most casually addressed out of everybody, but I do like the weapons that he's carrying with just a regular knife and a machete. And then my other favorite minifigures are definitely the Fremen. So you have Liet Kynes ready to ride a sandworm. She also comes with a new cape and that looks really, really awesome. And then you have, uh, that's her daughter in the books, but they didn't really establish that in the movies. But that is Chani Paul's eventual girlfriend, I guess, for lack of a better term. And of course, she's played by Zendaya, but I really love these two minifigures because I like the cloth. She has like a dark tan scarf that's just put around backwards. I love these face prints like with the bright blue eyes and then the masks like they just look they look incredible to me. Like they look like perfectly realized in Lego form, these two minifigures. And they just fill me with joy. And then finally, we have Baron Harkonnen, who everyone was really, really excited for. And he is ridiculous because he comes with that huge cloth piece to make it look like he's levitating. That is really great. Like, I love the way that it was executed. Well, I don't love it. I think it was executed well. You know, like, this is the best way it could be executed. But I do have some gripes because I don't love the way that the cloth drapes. As you can see, it kind of, like, sticks out, and so that kind of, like, makes his body shape look a little bit weird, uh, and, like, not weird as how it is in the movie. And, like, you can see that the cloth wraps around the side of the figure, but it's basically that the back is made up of these two, whoops, overlapping cloth pieces that are trying to mimic the same look as the one piece on the front, and I just don't think it's super successful because it's kind of hard to line them up. And I just don't think it looks right around his neck either. Like, I wish that the front piece was the last thing to go onto his neck so that, 
like those ridges were covered up. This is a huge nitpick, by the way. Like I'll be I'll be so honest. But like just the way that it went over really bothers me because you have to put the front on first and then the back parts on. And I just think the figure would look better if you put the back parts on first and then the front parts. But I tried that. I spent like 10 minutes messing with this while I was building it. And it was just like, like this is the best you can do. So I honestly feel like a better solution would have been to have four pieces, like one in the front, then the two overlapping ones at the back, and then another one at the back that kind of like held these guys in place better. But this is still a really awesome figure, and I love that the designer figured out a way to get his like levitating form into this set, because it's way more interesting than just having him be a regular minifigure. The Ornithopter itself is surprisingly big. I mean, I'm happy with the size because this is a $165 set, and you know, it feels like it, it's worthy of that price point given the finished product, but I just didn't really expect it to be quite this big, and it gets even bigger with the wings extended, of course. As you can see, there's a bunch of Technic stuff going on. I think that the cockpit is really, really well shaped. I love the new trans black color used there, but we'll talk about that a little bit more when I'm showing how you pose minifigures and everything. I like the printed Atreides crest on the side of the cockpit as well. And as you can see, there's just a bunch of Technic. Like, I saw some reviewers describing this as, like, really a Technic build with just, like, a system frame. I didn't feel that way. It still felt like a system set to me, not a Technic set, which is good because I don't love Technic sets. And there were a couple of areas of this model that were a little bit difficult to put together, but it didn't really feel as hard as I expected given how complex the functions are. And so that's a testament to the designer and whoever, you know, like made the instructions and designed the build experience because I didn't feel like it was annoying at like any point in the build. A lot of people have been complaining about the different colors that you can see here. I know that that really bothers some people. I do think that it was unnecessary, like completely unnecessary, because these red parts are made in black, that orange part is made in dark gray, these yellow axles are made in either black or light gray, depending on their length. So I don't really understand why we have so many strange colors when the same parts exist in more neutral colors that would blend better with the finished product. But to be perfectly honest, it doesn't bother me that much. I mean, if, if I really want to nitpick, I would like remove all of the weird colors and replace them. But I don't really care enough. Um, I, I've just never been like super bothered by oddly colored pieces. Or I should say oddly colored Technic pieces, because there are some times that I get annoyed with like some colored parts that are like wrong. So like that orange piece, that's the one that's like really annoying to me. I think that that could have been dark gray really easily. But what I think is more annoying is that there's like a bright lime green plate at the top right here that is really visible whenever you're like turning this thing around. And that's just a two by two plate. So it could have been done in dark gray. There were dark gray ones in the set already. I hate that that's lime green. I don't understand why it is lime green. So that's the kind of stuff that bothers me. But the Technic stuff, I, I feel like I'm more willing to give it a pass like when it creates such an amazing function. There's also a little red spot on the inside of the cockpit and you can see it like right there in front of the seats. It's just stuff like that where it feels like there could have been a little bit more attention to detail so that kind of stuff was covered up. But I guess we'll take a look at the cockpit now since I'm already there. That is a new mold on the front of this thing. That is epic. I really hope that that hits pick a brick because this piece, like the different shapes, New Elementary did a really nice comparison with like an old style cockpit from like 2007 that this is supposed to mimic. But yeah, like all of the different like slanted edges of this, it just reminds me of a jewel. Like that's what it feels, you know, like a cut diamond with all of like the different slopes. And so I really love it. I think that that's an amazing piece. Like I said, I love the trans black color of the cockpit getting like these large pieces in this color. It's really cool. I mean, I, that feels redundant because I just said the same thing, but I love this color. I'm so happy it was introduced. I can't wait to see like so many more pieces made in it because it is very different from the old trans brown, and I definitely prefer this color. As you can see, you can just lift the sides of the cockpit. Either side opens up like that, so that's pretty awesome. I tried to avoid saying cool that time. I don't know if that's exactly how it was done in the movie. Like, I rewatched a Dune Part 1 while I built this. That was a fun experience, but yeah, I can't. No, no, they don't. The cockpit doesn't open in the movie, right? They just go in through the ramp. So never mind. But um, but that is a clever way to get minifigures into the cockpit for the Lego version. And another clever thing is that it can be kind of hard to get your hands in there. Like, 
I mean, I guess it wouldn't be that hard to pose minifigures in there since both sides open, but you can just really easily remove this little section and then you can put a couple of minifigures down. So let's put Leto and I will just pose him right there and then he can lean back and then you can just go ahead and slide the minifigures in and then it just clips down onto those two studs. So that's pretty nice. I'm going to lower the camera a tiny bit so that we can see inside there better. In part one, he said his ships could take seven people each. You definitely cannot fit seven people into this ornithopter. It is only a two-seater, so that is kind of unfortunate, but you do have a little bit of detail up front. There's like a printed control panel and then a couple of like flight yokes, so that's pretty nice. And um, this little headlight in front of the cockpit can also like be adjusted up and down. So I like that. That's pretty cool, but yeah, there is no interior space on the rest of this model at all. I am a huge interior person. Like, I want my interior space on LEGO models. Like, that is one of the things that I prize above all else, especially on ships and vehicles of any sort. So you might expect me to complain that this huge ship can only fit two people, and I do wish it could fit more people in the cockpit, but I don't care at all about not being able to fit minifigures in the center of this thing because this function is so cool. I don't like it when interior detail is sacrificed for a mediocre function, but what the LEGO Ornithopter does is anything but mediocre. So let's go ahead and take a look at that feature now. So you basically have a very large switch on the top of the Ornithopter. It's this thing right here, and you just kind of have to hold the thing in place and pull this switch up and then the wings deploy. And yeah, it is kind of hard to capture on camera because this thing becomes enormous with those wings out. It is just a sight to behold. It's so cool to see in person and the function is just so smooth. To me, that's the coolest part of the set, the way that the wings like deploy and then fold back up. And this thing is a lot of fun to play with. Even though this is, you know, an 18 plus set, it's so much fun to fly around. And I love flying my Lego ships around, so I'm super happy about that. These blade pieces are brand new just for this set. They were designed, you know, only for the Ornithopter. They work really well as Wolverine claws. Uh, as you might have seen on my Instagram story, you can just slide those between your knuckles. And they are like the perfect length and look. So I can't wait to get some more of these things. I might genuinely go as Wolverine for Halloween. And by that, I mean, I'll build like a little linkage to connect a couple of these blades and put on a yellow shirt, but they're just so much fun. It's pretty hard to move this thing around with the blades deployed. In fact, I think they're going to hit my camera and the wall because they are just that long. But here's a slightly better view at the back of the ship, and then I'll show you guys how the blades come back in. They will kind of clip your hands, but I mean... They're like long, flexible pieces, so it's not like they're going to hurt you. They're not sharp. They aren't like a hazard. Um, so that works out pretty well. And yeah, I'm just, I'm, I just, I love this function. I, I think it's so cool and it's just so much fun. I really hope that it really stands the test of time and keeps working well because with some function heavy Lego sets, like I'm thinking about the creator expert slash icons amusement park sets those functions really stop working well after a little while, and I hope the same doesn't happen to this set. But it gets better because you can hold the entire thing from the tail, like the entire thing can just be picked up, and this is very strong. I have no qualms whatsoever about shaking it like this because of the strength of like this whole build. And to me, that's really impressive. And then, of course, you can flap the wings, so I like to do this two-handed. I like to support it from the bottom. But basically, this whole like ridged section is a big button. And so if you click, um, if you do it like more towards the front, you get better movement. But all of the wings will flap simultaneously. It's not a lot of flapping motion. That's like the biggest thing I heard from all my friends. They were all like, oh, I thought it would flap more. I thought it would be faster. And it would be awesome if it would go faster because of how fast these blades move in the movie. But I still think that this is pretty incredible. And I'm like really happy with this motion. And of course, like, to me, this is the secondary motion. Even though for most people, I think that this is the primary thing they're excited about. I just really love the, the blades coming in and out the most. I do have one problem with the design of this set, and that is that this 2x3 plate here always comes off. Because, like, this, this part just always hits the plate as it comes down. And so, without fail, whenever I've been flapping for more than, like, a minute, this plate falls off. And that seems like kind of an oversight to me. I don't really understand how that passed design review because 
it always comes off. It never stays on. And again, at first it was coming off like a lot when I would press down here. And then I started pressing up here. But it still just keeps loosening. Like you can even see it now that it's starting to pull up. And then there we go, it falls off. So yeah, that's like the one part of the design that I don't like. But I mean, it's just impressive that the wing flapping feature works so well. But that's not all. You do have another feature, and that's if you turn this piece, which I didn't even realize was the button for a play feature until I finished building the model. But if you turn this, the ramp and landing gear deploys at the same time. And that is really, really awesome. The ramp doesn't actually go anywhere, but it's just nice that it comes down. You can pose up a minifigure. But I don't really understand what the landing gear does either, because you can't leave the model like on the landing gear. So. I, I, I don't really get what that's supposed to do, um, but maybe maybe I'm doing something wrong. Let me know in the comments if, I, if I'm, like, resting this incorrectly. But, yeah, this seems, like, more like the kind of thing you do just, like, in a display or something like that if you figure out a way to elevate the rest of this thing off the ground. But it's just another amazing feature, and I'm really happy with, like, everything the designer managed to cram into this incredible set. I'm not going to show you guys the box or instructions because I already flattened the box, put away the instructions, and put away the extra pieces because I didn't think I would be doing a video. But yeah, I think that this set is pretty cool. For $165, I do think you get your money's worth. There's 1,300 pieces, so like on paper, the price per part ratio could be better. But I really think the Fantastic Minifigures kind of bridge that gap for me. I did see Dune Part 2 a week ago at the fan first screenings. I didn't love Part 1 when I saw it in theaters, but when I was re-watching it as I built this set, I did like it a little bit more, mostly because I could pause it and Google what was happening, because as someone that hasn't read the book, I did not have like any context. And Dune Part 2 was pretty good, but I do think that it's overhyped Part 2. Like People are calling it one of the best sequels of all time. I don't think that that's true at all like it's really good but to me it's like a 7 out of 10 movie not like an 11 out of 10 so I think maybe I just don't get Dune as much as other people but I do really love this set and honestly this set makes me like the franchise more it makes me wish that I liked Dune part 2 as much as everyone else does so even though the movies don't scratch my brain the way that they're scratching everyone else's I really hope we get more Dune sets from Lego and I think we will because I'm sure they're going to make that third Dune movie, and this set, I think, has been really well received, at least by fans. You know, like, I saw so many, like, memes and everything about the Baron Harkonnen minifigure, and I think it's it's executed really well. Like, these are such unique features to have in a set and, you know, like, in a system set, not in a fully Technic set, and so I would really love to see more Dune sets. Like, I'm not saying we need a giant sandworm. But I don't know, like, I'm sure there are, like, other vehicles that could be done. There are definitely more minifigures that I want to see. So I have my fingers crossed that maybe by the time Dune 3 comes out, we can get some smaller, like, more minifigure scale sets, because I think that this is larger than minifigure scale. And I'd really like to see some Dune sets, like, at $100 or less, so that they're even more accessible to everyone else. Let me know what you guys think about this set in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well, and I'll see you guys in more videos soon. Bye for now.